Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we are approving double angle formulas, evaluating double angle formulas, solving double angle formulas, and simplifying identities. Okay, I've already done the first video on proving. Now we're going to evaluate. So let's look at this part two, evaluating double angles. Well, first of all, I need to show you that the sine of 60, because we know that one, that one's on the unit circle, what it is and what it's not. Okay, first of all, the sine of a double angle, in other words, 2 times u, is not equal to 2 times sine of u. So you can't factor this 2 out and put it in front. But indeed, the sine of this double angle is equal to the 2 times the sine of u times the cosine of u. So first we're going to take one that we know. So we're going to use 60 as our example. Okay, we know that the sine of 2 times 30, well, 2 times 30, that's the angle 60. Well, what's the sine of 60? Well, you have to think about your unit circle. So let's think about the xy axis, and the sine of 60 is right here. And we know the sine of 60 is the, is the y coordinate, which is the square root of 3 all over 2. It is the height in this position of your 30, 60, 90. So how does that compare to this formula? If they are the same, then this other one should be the square root of 3 over 2. But I'm going to show you that it's not. So we're going to take the sine of 2 times the angle 30 and write it as the formula says 2 times the sine of 30 cosine 30. So now we need to think of the half, half of that angle in its position. Well, 30 is right here. And we know the sine is a half at that position. So sine of 30 is a half, and then we're going to have 2 times that 1 half times the cosine at that position. Well, the cosine at that position is the longer side of the 30, 60, 90, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So what all does this simplify to? Well, the 2 times 1 half cancels out, and it ends up being the square root of 3 over 2. So that is true. We know this formula does indeed work. So how does that compare to 2 times the sine of 30? What if we factored that out? Well, let's go back and look. What is the sine of 30? That's this position. That's a half. So 2 times 1 half is just 1. And we know the sine of 60 does not equal to 1. They're not equal. Therefore, this formula does indeed hold true. And the sine of 60 is equal to the formula versus 2. You can't factor this 2 out. I'm just showing you those two are not equal. Okay, so let's evaluate cosine of 2u. We're going to use cosine squared minus sine squared. This one has more than one form, but that's the one we're going to use. Okay, so we have cosine of 2 pi thirds. Well, we know the answer to that, so we can kind of plot it out before we even start and look at what it should be. Okay, 2 pi thirds is in quadrant 2, and cosine is your x direction, which is negative 1 half. So our answer should be negative 1 half when we expand this. So when we expand it, let's rewrite it with the angle written as a half angle. So I'm going to rewrite cosine of 2 um, 2 pi thirds is cosine of pi thirds. Uh, oh, we don't have to do that. Hang on. We're going to use our formula and just take the cosine of half of this angle. So what are we doing? We're going to take cosine of just pi thirds, which is half of the angle, and we're going to take that quantity and we're going to square it. And we're going to subtract from it the sine of pi thirds, which is half of the double angle, 
and we're going to square that and then we're going to subtract them. So there we go. We're going to expand that as half of this angle, which is, remember, 2 pi thirds can be written as pi thirds plus pi thirds. Okay, so we're just taking half, oops, should be a 3, should be just half of the original angle. Now, 2 uh, pi thirds is right here. Well, cosine in that position is just 1 half. So I'm going to take 1 half and I'm going to square it. I'm going to subtract from it uh, sine of pi thirds. Well, sine of pi thirds is root 3 over 2, and then I have to square that one. So once I square these, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. And then root 3 over 2, I've got to subtract that, and that's going to give me root 3 squared is just 3, and then 2 squared is 4, so 1 fourth minus 3 fourths, that's negative 2 fourths. And what do we know negative 2 fourths is equal to? Negative 1 half. Well, there you go. I just showed you that this formula does indeed work. Because this position is on the unit circle, I can show you that it works. Not all of them are going to fall in the unit circle, and that's why you have a double angle. So let's evaluate sine of pi halves using a double angle formula. So using the double angle formula, I've got to figure out what's half of pi halves. Well, half of pi halves is pi fourths. So if I divide this by 2, which is also multiplying by half, I'm going to work with the angle pi fourths in my equation. So rewrite the angle as a double angle, so it's just pi fourths. So sine of pi halves, we, kn we know what that is. That one's on the inner circle. But to prove it, let's plug it in as 2 times sine of the half angle, which is pi fourths, times cosine of pi fourths. Well, Let's see, we're going to bring down the 2, and then sine at pi fourths is root 2 over 2 times cosine at pi fourths, that is also a root 2 over 2. So when I go and multiply these together, these 2's cancel, and then have root 2 times root 2, which is root 4, which is just 2. And they have two, oh, and all over two. Well, that's just one. And don't we know that the sine at pi halves is indeed one? So there you go. There's one to prove to you that this works on the unit circle. Okay, let's try tangent of pi thirds. Well, what's half of pi thirds? You have to think through what half of that is. Well, half of pi thirds is pi sixth. So we're going to use pi sixth to work with it, okay? So let's rewrite this with half the angle in here. So tangent of pi thirds is equal to 2 times tangent of pi sixth all over 1 minus tangent of pi 6. Now, what's tangent at pi 6? Let's think about the unit circle. Okay, unit circle, we are right here. And that would be a root 3 all over 3 for tangent. So let's plug in a root 3 over 3 here and here. Oop, I forgot my square right there, didn't I? Okay, don't forget to square this bottom. So we have 2 times root 3 all over 3 all over 1 minus root 3 over 3, and then don't forget the square. Okay, so let's see what we have. In the numerator, we have 2 root 3 over 3, and in the denominator, we have 
1 minus, and let's square this thing. The square root of 3 squared is just 3. The square root of 3, or 3 squared is 9. So that gives me 1 minus 3 ninths, which is 1 third. Well, 1 third is just 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. So my denominator is 2 thirds. My numerator is 2 root 3 over 3. So when you have a complex fraction, we're going to use that to keep change flip. So keep the first one, multiply, and then multiply by the reciprocal. And boom. So what's our final answer? Our final answer is the square root of 3. So that is what the tangent of pi thirds is using the double angle formula. So there's your third one. Okay, let's try a double angle using triangles. So we're going to start with sine x being 3 fifths and quadrant 2. Okay, quadrant 2 is important because sine is positive in quadrant 2, but cosine is negative and tangent is negative. So the first thing you want to do with these is you want to draw your picture so you can see it. So let me take this off. And here we are in quadrant 2 with the triangle and the reference angle of x with a sine of 3 fifths. Now, we want to find the sine or the sine of double this angle x. Well, this angle x, if I double it, it's going to end up way over here somewhere. Okay? It's going to either be in quadrant quadrant um, 3 or 4. I'm not sure exactly where, but it's going to be a larger angle. So, what I have to do is I have to think about um, first writing the formula down. So the sine of 2x is equal to the sine, or 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. Oh, I don't know why it did that, but it jumped on me. Let's fix that. Times the cosine of x. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a double angle down to a single angle. And this is a single angle because that's what my triangle is drawn with, the single angles. So to evaluate the sine of 2x, I'm going to take 2 times the sine of x. Well, that was given to us as 3 fifths. And then cosine of x in quadrant 2, that's negative 4 fifths. So I have a 3 fifths and a negative 2 fifths as my two trig values. So now let's just multiply all these together. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. And then in our denominator, we just have 5 times 5. So there we go. It's negative 24 20 fifths to evaluate the sign somewhere over here. And that makes sense. It should be negative because if it's from quadrant 3 or 4, don't we know sine is negative down here? So there you go. So now let's look at cosine. Okay, cosine of the double angle, I can use any of my formulas. I can use the sine formula, the squared formulas. I can use cosine squared minus sine squared, or I can use that 1 minus 2 sine squared. I'm just going to go ahead for the first time. I'm going to go ahead and use cosine squared x minus sine squared x. I already have my sign, so it's nice and easy. I've already got the triangle drawn. So I'm just going to use the two trig functions from our triangle. So our cosine was negative 4 fifths. I'm going to take that and I'm going to square it. And I'm going to subtract from it the sine, which was given as 3 fifths. Now, when we calculate this, that's going to give us 16 20 fifths minus 9. Whoops, I forgot my square there. Minus 9 20 fifths. And that's going to give us 16 minus 9 is what? 7, 7 20 fifths. And there is our final answer. Okay, there's our second value. Now let's evaluate the double angle. Um, let's talk about the sine of this for a second. Okay, cosine in this problem ended up being a positive value. 
So what does that tell us about which quadrant it ended up in? Okay, it's a positive, it's a negative sine, but it's a positive cosine. So that must mean this double angle is actually in quadrant four, and that's how you can tell. Okay, now tangent, we're going to use our tangent formula. We're going to do two times the tangent of x and then minus one times tangent squared of x. Now we haven't written the tangent yet, so let's go back, look at our triangle and see what the tangent is. Okay, tangent is going to be opposite, which is three, over adjacent, which is negative four. So negative three fourths. So it's going to be two times negative three fourths all over one minus the quantity negative three fourths squared. And I say quantity because you have to be careful you're squaring that negative value. So the product is on top. So let's see, this would be two over one and the two is going to cancel with a four. So our numerator is negative three halves. And our denominator is going to be one minus, and then that's going to square and become a positive. So that's going to be 9 sixteenths. So 1 minus 9 sixteenths, we're going to write this as 16 sixteenths because that's 1 minus 9 sixteenths, so that's 7 sixteenths. Then we have a complex fraction, so we rewrite this as 3 halves times 16 over 7. So what's that going to give us? Let's do a little reducing here. The 2 goes into the 16, 8. So that gives us negative 24 over 7. And there we go. We've got the uh, tangent of that same angle. So I hope you see kind of a common theme here. Negative 24, 25 was a sign. The cosine was 7 25ths, and then the tangent was negative 24 sevenths. So what are we dealing with? We're actually dealing with an angle that is in quadrant 4, a reference angle, where the hypotenuse is 25. The opposite is a negative 24, and the adjacent is 7. So really, this is the triangle we were working with. Isn't that cool? So a 7, 24, 25, half, if we take half of that, it ends up being a 3, 4, 5 triangle in quadrant 2, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so let's look at one more example of this type of co-function, or this type of evaluating. You're going to do this with secant. Now, secant's not one of our three main um, trig functions, it's a co-function, so you have, to, you have to work with it a little bit more. So we've got secant u is negative 7 halves, and we're in quadrant mm, pi halves to pi. That means we're in quadrant 2. So we know this is pi halves, and we know this is pi. So we're in quadrant 2, so let's draw our secant triangle. Now secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So 7 is your hypotenuse. The adjacent would be negative 2. Now, to find the third side, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'll call this for, for now. We'll call, well, we'll call it y for the y value. So negative 2 quantity squared plus y squared is equal to 7 squared. So we end up with y squared is equal to 49 minus 4. So y ends up being the square root, plus or minus, the square root of 45, which ends up being 3, what's that going to be? Um, 3 roots, 45 is no, 3 root 5. Now we have to decide based on the quadrant if it's a positive or it's a negative. So since we're in quadrant two and it's the y direction, it's gonna be the positive uh, three root five, not the negative three root five. So there's our triangle. Now working with those, I can do my sine, my cosine, and my tangent formula. So the sine 
of the double angle to u is going to be 2 times the sine of u, which is the single angle, times the cosine of u. So let's figure this one out. So we have 2 times, well the sine of u is 3 root 5 all over 7. We're going to take that times the cosine of the angle, and I'll go ahead and put u. I should have put u in there. Okay, now cosine is just the reciprocal of secant, so that's just negative 2 sevenths. And so let's see what that gives us. That gives us 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12 over root 5, all over 7 times 7, which is 49. So there is the sine of the double angle, okay? Then we can find the cosine. Now this time on cosine, instead of using the double angle cosine squared minus sine squared, I'm going to use, um, let's see, let's do 2 cosine squared u minus 1. We're going to use this time just a different form. So, let's see. We've already figured out the cosine. Cosine was kind of given to us because secant was given to us. So, we just take the reciprocal. So, 2 times cosine is negative 2 sevenths. And we've got to square that, though. So, don't forget to square that. Minus 1. So, negative 2 sevenths squared would be 2 times the quantity positive 4 over 49 minus 1. But I'm going to write my minus 1 with a denominator of 49. So that's just going to be 49 49 ths. So let's see. That gives us 8 on top, right? 8 minus 49, which is negative 41 over 49. And there is my cosine of my double angle. Okay, now let's try the tangent. The tangent is equal to 2, or the tangent of 2u is the tangent of u, the single angle, which is what we have, 1 minus uh, tangent squared. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second because I don't know if you've kind of put this together yet. But this is going to be a lot of work. I already know my opposite and my hypotenuse, and I know my adjacent and my hypotenuse. So can't I just draw this triangle? I sure can. So knowing that cos uh, sine is negative, cosine is negative, that means my tangent must be positive. So I must be in quadrant 3. So... Let's draw this triangle in quadrant 3, and this is the double U angle, okay? I know that my adjacent is going to be negative 41. My opposite is going to be negative 12 root 5, and I know my hypotenuse is 49. So I can actually draw that triangle, and it makes my um, trick by double angle for tangent easy because I'm just going to write sine over cosine, so negative 12 root 5 all over four, negative 41, which just becomes positive 12 root 5 all over 41. Now, I could work the problem out and get the same answer. And this makes sense because I have sine and cosine are negative, so tangent is going to be positive. I could plug in the tangent and work it all out of the single angle. But now that you've got enough information about the double angle triangle, you have adjacent hypotenuse and opposite, you can actually just draw it. So this one ended up being in quadrant three. So let's talk about that for a second. Quadrants, okay? So anytime you have a double angle in quadrant two, 
if you half it, it's going to end up in quadrant one because 90 to 180 are all the angles in quadrant two. So if you take half of that, half of 180 is 90 and half of 90 is 45. So they're gonna happen in the second half of quadrant one. Now, if I take a double angle from quadrant three, so I'm going from 180 to 270. Well, 180 starts here at 90 and half of 270 is 135. So that means any angle that's in quadrant three, when I take a half of it, using the half angle, it's in, gonna be in quadrant two, but in the first half of quadrant two. Then all the angles from 270 to 360, which occur in quadrant four, um, half angles, well, half of one, uh, 270 is 135. So that means all the half angles in quadrant four start in quadrant two halfway and half of 360 is 180. So they're gonna be in the second half of quadrant two. So you can kind of use that to help you guide, to help guide you through signs to make sure they're correct. So there we go. That's the end of uh, using the double angle uh, formulas to evaluate. The next video will be on solving. I hope this video was helpful.